hey everybody, DMA is coming up. Here's your audition music. I'm gonna play them for you and talk about the excerpts a little bit. And I'm gonna play it with the metronome with headphones on in case you wanted to play along. You could do it at the proper tempo. If you need to look at a specific excerpt, click on the timestamp and that'll take you to that individual piece. play this with a hymn tune style. It's not going to be super accented, but a little bit more lyrical. Uh, and I would practice this with a metronome because the metronome marking 72 is actually slower than you might be used to hearing it. Now, you might have not seen me do it because I have a trigger slide here, but cornet players, you've got a couple of really long Ds, like in measure eight and in measure 12. So please make sure you're kicking out your third valve slide. The auditioner is gonna be looking and listening for that. They can hear if you're sharp on those Ds. This is the perfect time to demonstrate that you know how to do that properly. Shape those phrases a little bit and you'll be fine. to joy, Beethoven's ninth, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this one is allegro, so it's a little bit faster and it is still kind of in the hymn tune category, but you can give it a little bit more energy. That allegro style, you could think about a little bit more of an articulation on the front of the note. It's a little bit more of a ta rather than a da, but you still want to connect them. Now look at the roadmap. Please notice that you'll play all the way through and then after the DS Alfini, you'll go back to measure five and then to the fine, which is measure eight. All right, and check out your dynamics. You do have a little bit of a difference in the last section there, measure nine through 12. Did I count right? Yeah, nine through 12. Yep, that's all I gotta say about that one. You guys know the tune. Just play it as beautifully as you can. When you're playing these early ones, like number one and two, the judges are really listening for how musical are you playing? Are you playing with a good steady rhythm, a good articulation, and a great sound? If you can do those basic things, then you'll be fine. <sighs> Now number three is another hymn tune, but this is a little bit more peppy. It's like a march kind of, Allegro Giacoso, which is a little bit more happy. So we can give this a little bit of a lighter feel, a little bit more space between the notes, and a little bit more articulation. You'll also notice some syncopation, and what we like to do on the syncopation is on the single eighth note with the flag on it, give that a little bit of a shortness, and then accent the chord note after it. Da, 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 da. Anyway, this one's a little faster too. Let's check out that change in tempo. 120, march tempo. A few dynamic changes in here as well. Number four 
is a little tricky. The dot and eight sixteen rhythm is a beast. People always have trouble with this because it's hard to keep it straight. People will tend to go da 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 da, but it's actually da 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 da, right? That 16th note is very close to the da da eighth note after it. So you can think about accenting that note. Da, ta ta, ta ta, ta ta. That helps a lot. Think about keeping them close together. You can even think about subdividing. Ta, ta ta, ta ta, ta ta. Practice it slow until you feel really good about it, and then speed it up. There's some really awkward fingerings in the second line in the last, whatever it is, five or six measures. So practice those slowly. All those A's to G sharps, whew, that's a doozy. Number four doesn't have any breath marks listed. And you might be able to do this in one breath if you play it fast enough. But what I would recommend if you need to take a breath in the middle is in the decrescendo measure before the mezzo piano, I believe that's measure eight it is, after that G I would sneak in a breath. I would look at those three notes after the G as a pickup into the mezzo piano. Da 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 da. So I think after the G you can take a breath there. Somebody else might tell you something different. That's what I would do. I might change my mind in another day, but we'll do that for now. Watch out for those jumps as well. Da, 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 da. You really want to hear the notes. If you're not hearing them, you're never going to play them. So do it slowly until you're comfortable with where the notes are, especially those lower ones. Uh, all right, that's all I got for that one. And I'll play it again at 116 so you can hear a little faster. especially on number five, almost everything is staccato. If it's not staccato, it's got a, a house top on it, which is a little bit more of a punch even than a staccato. Staccato is more like, like, da, 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 like a boxer, you know, just, uh, uh, uh. and then the, um, what are we calling these house top these days? Christmas trees. They're a little bit more like a pow, you know, a little quick jab. So give it something special. The only other thing that you're gonna notice Articulation wise is measure eight, is that eight? The A, A flat, G. That G has a staccato with an accent rather than a house top or regular staccato. That is the only note in here that's a little bit different. I interpret that being a little longer. So give it a little bit of emphasis, okay? It's staccato, but we wanna hear it. We wanna differentiate it between the other jabs and pops. Simile, of course, means that play everything with that style. It doesn't mean stop articulating when you get to simile. It means everything's that same way. This is another one you really have to hear the notes before you play them. And I would even practice this maybe 
one measure, break it up, or maybe in two measure groups, there's a couple of really funky measures. Like look at measure one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's super awkward. How weird is that? It sounds weird, the fingering's weird. You really need to do it a couple times to get used to it. And then, I mean, how about uh, four measures later, measure 13? And then the next one after that, the simile. There's just all kinds of things you really have to hear it before you can play it accurately. And that's gonna take some practice slowly and break it up into little chunks before you try it all together. Don't try playing along with this recording or playing it at tempo until you can do individually every measure at the tempo that you're comfortable with. Then place them together. All right, here's how number five sounds. If you're gonna play it at 96, you can probably single tongue it. If you're gonna try going much faster, you're gonna to have to start double tongue it at some point. At 132, you'll almost certainly need to double tongue it. But if you can single tongue it, that's awesome. You should definitely do that. I can't, I'm not good enough for that. There's a lot of nuance with those dynamics. You gotta really pay attention. You probably noticed I had a little blip here or there. I'm just not gonna do it a million times because I need to practice it more this week as well. That gives you an idea of what you need to be working on though. Let's try it at 132. Here's 132. That's really hard for me to single tongue, so I'm gonna go into double tongue mode. to get it up to that tempo, but you've got time, so do it. <laughs> you know, I'm probably going to cut all this stuff out, but it keeps me from going crazy. Ooh, that's a hard one. Oh, no, this next one's a hard one. If your face isn't red with veins popping out at the end, you didn't quite play it loud enough. So try it again. Number six is maybe the most difficult one in the packet. And number seven is pretty bad too. I mean, it's great, I love it, but it's hard. Number six though, it's big, strong the entire time, and it has to be powerful throughout. You've got to sustain all the long notes, give them some direction, no fizzling out. I mean, it takes some chops and it stays there high. We don't want to get too crass with those higher notes, but we want to make sure that they're powerful. I don't know how your high A's are. You might want to experiment with some alternate fingerings. I can try them third valve sometimes. Not really. Don't do second valve on an A. I mean, if you do second valve on A, you're crazy. But one and two, yeah, pull out the slide if you need to. Um, just give it some... Just try... Just, Anyway, I like to take one breath in here, and I take a breath right on the first beat of one, two, three, four, measure four. That G tied over to the G, just cut off that tied over eighth note, make that an eighth rest. That is your breath. That should get you to the end. If you need to take another one, you're just going to have to figure out why you want to sneak it. You could do one on the next tie, the high G tied over to the... Um, the eighth note G, but I don't like that breath. I think you need to dig through the phrase all the way to the end right there. And do not fizzle out on that low B flat or the, the middle line B flat on the last note. Play it strong, maybe even a slight retardando right there. I'm going to play it with the metronome, but honestly, you might want to give it a little bit more direction, 
push and pull just slightly with the musicality. Not a whole lot because this is something that's played as a cornet section uh, on the original piece. So keep it in time pretty much, maybe just a little retardando at the end there. This is a good one if you want to add some ebbs and flows, a little bit of musicality to it. That's totally fine, but you want to be sure that you're still being rhythmically consistent with your pulse, even if you are doing some rubato movements there. So it's good to practice it with the metronome, even if you plan to speed up, slow down a little, push and pull there. All right. This is in B flat minor, by the way, so it's good to know all of your scales because sometimes they're gonna show up in weird situations like this one. G flats, please get those G flats, okay? Okay, happy practicing. Let us know in the comments if there's something we can do to help you out or if you have any questions about specific techniques for future videos. See ya next time.